Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor and M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. Here's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with Tom Brady go, and Let's the New go. England Patriots. 48, 48, 48, 48. Let's go, D. On first down, Brady. He's going to have the hook up to Izzo. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A game there of 30 big ones. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe try to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. Brady now going to leave it with Michelle on the draw. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. From midfield, here's Brady. Caught by Sanu. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Sanu, another piece to the puzzle now in New England. He was picked up from the 1-6 Falcons in the hours following the Patriots' 33-0 win over the Jets. And for the year, Sanu, 33 catches over 300 yards and a touchdown. His last three years in Atlanta, 59, 67, and 66 catches. And now he is excited to be a Patriot. They'll run with a former Super Bowl hero. It's James White. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing, right? And everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Brady's throw there complete. It'll be a Patriot first down on a pickup of 16. Mohamed Sanu is a guy that is often overlooked because he just quietly goes about his business. But how about last season? Had a career high 838 yards on 66 catches, and he can also play Wildcat quarterback for you as well. Brady's got his guys first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Going on the ground, it's White, and he'll get four there down to about the 12 yard line. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. Blitz coming and down he goes. It's a safety blitz and a sack for Earl Thomas. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. To throw, it's Brady. And a dump off to White. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area, that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. 
And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Baltimore coming back out here, CD. And this is a Ravens team that heads into their open week right now on a three-game win streak. Very comfortable two-and-a-half game cushion atop the AFC North. And if you had to say pretender or contender, I think this is a contender, my friend. Not just a contender, a solid contender. A contender to really do damage in the playoffs because Lamar Jackson and his legs the ultimate wild card that drives defensive coordinators crazy. And the defense is playing well for them as usual in Baltimore. Last but not least, within their own division, Pittsburgh and Cleveland are trying to figure it out because right now, they're not pressing them at all. Next up, after the open week, it does get tough because they're going to host the Patriots in what might be a preview. Talked about the playoffs and maybe the AFC Championship, and then they'll follow that with a trip to Cincinnati. Quick throw taken in by Sneed. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans. But then had a bit of a bounce back campaign a season ago in his first go around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger. But back to full health and ready to go. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Here's Sneed as they run the jet sweep. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Let's and that's one of the reasons you like to blitz Let's even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Ready, ready. Check, check Mike 54. Mike 54. Here we go, D. All day, defense. All day. On third down, Jackson rolling to his right. He may try and run for Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return and a Patriot touchdown. And that's a linebacker showing he can move pretty good with a football in his hand. That's not just a short shuttle now. He took it and went a pretty good distance, didn't he? Did you get the 40 time on that? <laughs> I didn't, but he got six points out of it. I know that and a great play for that defensive unit. <laughs> Extra point up and good by Folk. And the lead grows to 10-0. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. 
This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. There to stop him, Jawan Bentley. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. Now it appears we've got an injured Raven down there on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots, D on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. And that will be incomplete. That makes them now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. This is taken at the 18. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Patriots take over. New England getting the football back here. And Charles, they are, as we said earlier, still undefeated. Defeating the Jets on Monday night. They've now beaten the New York Jets eight straight times. It was their second shutout of the season. What was it, 33 to nothing? I, you kind of, kind of lost track. Yeah, you lose way. track, don't you? But this is a team, obviously, that is still with it, you know, doing everything that it can to get back to the Super Bowl and win another one. And not only that, despite the fact their defense playing at really historical levels right now, they added to their team made a move for another receiver to try and help out Tom Brady in the offense, getting Mohamed Sanu for a second rounder from the Atlanta Falcons. And he'll have him in time to get ready for Cleveland at home in week eight. And then they go to Baltimore before they have their open week in week 10. So this is really cool to see because Cleveland, big aspirations. They have to prove it against New England. Baltimore and New England, maybe, possibly, a big playoff game down the road. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Now how many times have we seen that? Third down and Tom Brady turning to old reliable Julian Edelman. Of course, no Rob Gronkowski now. Edelman the main holdover, the 33-year-old who was a Super Bowl MVP last season. To throw is Brady. Caught by the tight end Watson. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Brady gives to Michelle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs hey, like that because the great. defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Hey, hey, hey. You got three. You got three. Hey, 66. Now a play fake. Brady. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. Past the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 11. Now it's Jackson. Boom! 
Now this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Now a first carry for their fullback. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. They'll run it here. This is their fullback getting the carry. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. I'm not sure how much I really love that call. It almost seems like a little bit of a give up there. But maybe what they were thinking is, we've got a chance to pop one. They think we're just going to give up here, hand it to the big man, and maybe he can get through. Sometimes there's a little bit of courage in play calling that maybe we don't give enough credit. Let's take it inside his own 40. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And that will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Throwing on first down is Brady. That's caught by the tight end, Lacoste. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. On the ground is Michelle. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? From the gun on third down, Brady. He hits White, complete. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And this one brought in by Sanu. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. On second down, they'll run with White, and he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. Throwing is Brady on third down. And this is caught. It's Edelman. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag. 
but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Wait, set. Round 80. Round 80. Me and you on deck. On deck. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. From the gun, it's Brady. Yeah, he's got it. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and goal from the one. Brady now to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time, but now it's third and goal. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss a one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot, and he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. So now it's third and goal. This Raven defense trying to keep him out of the end zone. Has a man, and it's Edelman for the Patriot touchdown. There we go. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, a I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Well, everyone in this stadium knows Jackson can do that as well as any QB in the league. Now, they talked about limiting some of his running this year, especially the design runs, but he's still going to scramble when he feels he has green in front of him. He led all quarterbacks last year, 695 yards rushing. And keep in mind, 80% of those came in the seven-game stretch when he was named starter late in the season. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Come on, baby. Let's see what you got. They run. It's Mark Ingram. Devin McCourty brings him down. 
I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Ravens on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and five. Throwing is Jackson. He can run for it, and he will. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 23. He really looked comfortable there, scanning the situation, analyzing things, feeling the pressure, and then stepping up right through the middle and sprinting for a first down. 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. You remember me? You remember me? <laughs> now Jackson on first down. Eluding the pressure right. He'll have a first down inside the 10. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Obviously, a big play was needed. And you can see his eyes light up as he realized there's absolutely no one in front of him. And he takes off and goes, and goes a long way. Not only does he pick up a first down, but a big gain to boot. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Nick Boyle there to make the grab as they are now on the board here in the first half. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Tucker with the extra point, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On first and 10, here's Brady. That's to his running back, Sony Michelle. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Brady gonna throw. Here's Sanu on the catch. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. New England on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Now Brady. He's going to air one out. Incomplete. Both players were there offensively and defensively, but it falls incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown on their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Ravens, they'll take over. 
And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 20. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. John Simon in on the stop. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Jackson to throw. This one complete to Ingram. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Jackson, option right. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. It's our field. It's our field. Jackson from the shotgun toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Seth Roberts, but it'll be second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. To throw is Jackson. Going to throw again. Got him in. It's Brown. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Operating from the gun, Jackson. And the return goes up to his own 17-yard line. Well, partner, let's take a quick look ahead to week eight. A couple of exciting matchups. Carolina had undefeated San Francisco and then Green Bay and Kansas City on Sunday night. That should be a fun one. It should be in Green Bay, Kansas City, a rematch of the first ever Super Bowl that was played. Green Bay winning that one in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. But that Carolina-San Francisco game is so intriguing to me because to me it's a battle of defenses. Carolina's defense is playing at a high level but is anyone playing better defense in San Francisco outside of New England? I would say no. And then also Seattle at Atlanta, and I bring up that game because, gosh, if the Falcons lose, Dan Quinn might not have a job. Yeah, and that's true, and I hate that because DQ is one of the best guys you're going to meet. And it was just two years ago, his team was in the Super Bowl. But right now they're one in six, and if they lose to Seattle, they're facing an open week, and there'll be a heavy discussion and a job referendum on him at that point. 
Wait, 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 now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts no as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. To throw again on second down. Brady caught by Sanu. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Brady's got his guys first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now Brady again. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. 18 big yards on that one, and a New England first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Wait, that, wait, 20. Check, check, Brady now on first down. Looking for Edelman, and he hits him. It's complete. And a nice gain of 21 this. yards. The well, former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not Wait, just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver. And this is caught. Touchdown, Patriots. Benjamin Watson. As the first half is winding down. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Fulk connects on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Uh, we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, Here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only gonna fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not gonna be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! So here we go for half number two. The Patriots with the lead, and they will be getting the football. And a good effort on the return there. Gets them across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. 
Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. This has kind of been the story all night long, hasn't it? An inability to really get much done on third downs, and it's costing them. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And that right there is something we've seen, oh, I don't know, 15 times in NFL history. That will officially go down as a 60-yard field goal. And everything has to be absolutely perfect for this to have any chance. He's got to get it out low and really drive through it. And I tell you, that was one heck of a kick, one heck of a decision on the sideline to even try it as well. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Patriots offensive unit. They'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things. Yeah. On first down, Brady. He finds Dorsett. It's complete. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Well, they obviously read man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. What by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. He curls back inside for the completion. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing now is Brady. Complete to Watson, the tight end. 25 yards that time. That time a slant, Brady in general on those quick hitters, he just releases the ball so fast. He does, and he's so accurate, but most of the time, he wins before the ball's even snapped by his pre-snap read. Finds out where the defense is and delivers it to the proper place. Brady deferring to White on the draw. 
Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. They stay on the ground. This time it's Michelle. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Shotgun now for Brady. Looking middle and it's incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver. And it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. With that incompletion, let's play a little game here. We'll call it two up, two down. Surprising team so far. Two for the good, two for the bad. All right, let's start with the good. The Buffalo Bills. Did you really think they'd be pressed? for first place this deep into the season? No. Okay, how about the Carolina Panthers? Start 0-2 with Cam Newton, undefeated without him. How about two down? The Atlanta Falcons. I thought they'd press for a playoff spot. And the Los Angeles Chargers. How about the Browns at 2-4? and four? I thought you'd put them in there. I didn't expect them to be the team others thought in preseason. I thought they might contend for a playoff spot, but it doesn't surprise me overall. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Jackson. And an alley to run. And he slides to avoid the hit. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy, make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. And he held on to it, but he probably shouldn't have as they get him behind the line. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it second and 14. From the gun, Jackson, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. He gets it to Brown, complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. 
Nice big gain there from Marquise Brown, first-round pick out of Oklahoma. Of course, his cousin knows a thing or two about big catches in the NFL. That's Antonio Brown. And now Hollywood hoping to carry on the family tradition of solid production at the wide receiver position. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Okay, partner, let's mix things up a bit. This is something that's been a staple of morning television programs for a long time. Let's bring it to Madden, some power rankings. Give me your top five through seven weeks. All right, I'll start with number five, and that's the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson, he can throw it as well as run it, but his running, that's so exciting. Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Looks like Aaron Rodgers and his head coach, Matt LaFleur. Looks like they're in sync, and the Packers are playing awfully well right now. Number three, San Francisco. Their defense built to travel. They can play anywhere and take on anyone, and they run the ball on offense. Number two, New Orleans. They've survived without Drew Brees. In fact, they flourished with Teddy Bridgewater, and their defense, vastly underrated, one of the top three in the league. And last but not least, shocker, New England. And I did think about putting New Orleans ahead of New England, but New England's defense is the best in the league, and Tom Brady on the other side, they still reign supreme. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll fake the give to Ingram, now Jackson. He'll buy some time right. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir, able to turn that into a positive game. Let him know, let him know. Jackson, option right. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Jackson, options out left. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage. And he will score! Touchdown, Baltimore! Lamar Jackson, his second touchdown of the night as his guys are back within a single score. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No! <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that cuts the lead to now to kick it away following the touchdown this is taken at the three and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line and now out come the Patriots certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession that was punt the football because this this game's starting to tighten up in a basketball sense you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball right maybe milk some clock limit the possessions in this case they might want to do the same thing but control the game offensively put together some first downs put together a drive and keep it away from them they'll try to get this offense going with Michelle 
And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Go. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that set. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. Now, meanwhile, the throw by Brady knocked away incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and now it's second down. Well, earlier, Charles, we looked at some of the Week 8 games that were intriguing. How about some Week 8 games where you've got a team that really, really needs a win? And I, I was thinking about the Chargers at Chicago and Cleveland at New England. You feel like the Chargers in Cleveland need to find a way to get a victory. I think you're exactly right, and the Chargers' chances are really slipping away. Chicago, y'all would throw in there as well at three and three and struggling on offense. They say they know they need to run the ball more. They absolutely must run the ball more. But Cleveland and New England, for me with Cleveland, with all the high expectations in preseason, it's almost a must win at a place almost no one wins. And a couple more here. Some Giants at Detroit. All of a sudden, Detroit's at the bottom of the NFC North. And everyone says the same thing about them. They have great talent. That's a really good football team. Hard to believe they're at 2-3-1 and one right now. Last but not least, what about the Steelers hosting Miami Monday night? They cannot lose that one. They absolutely cannot because Baltimore is threatening to run away with the division. Pittsburgh has to have that game on Monday night. So they move from 136 over to the other as they come up on first down. From the gun, they run with Michelle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two there, second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On second and 12, Brady goes underneath here to White. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Wait, New England on third three. down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. And the blitz does come. And able to find Dorsett. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right out the money. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Extra point up and good by Folk. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. 
This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. The throw there finding its way to Boyle. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now it's Jackson. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And it's third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. They head to the line, facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. Here's Jackson. It's complete to Snead. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. On first and 10, it's Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And Jackson throwing once more. Towards the end zone for Brown. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Jackson looking to throw on third. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 44-yard line. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now it's Jackson. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. J.C. Jackson there defensively to knock it away. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Jackson now on second and 10. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. On third down, Jackson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And the screen only good for three that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away go, no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So distance, not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Oh, 
always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. A throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Let's go! They'll Let's get go! three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult like right there. Hey. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. On second and 11 now, Brady. And he'll get that to Michelle, complete. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Brady. He's got Sanu. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 18. Let's go! He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way Wait, open and completing the connection. Right now. Let's go. Push him back. Push him back. Ah! Off the draw. Here's Michelle. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Yeah, a loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it can be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And this one brought in by Sanu. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. And yeah, Michelle will find his way in for a Patriots touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. Well, that turned out how they wanted. Run the toss play to the left side, go for that pylon, get in there. And just being able to understand where the pylon was and sneak it in there, well done, well executed. Full connects on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? A gain of six there on first. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, and his throw is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Here we go. The here Ravens we go. on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and four. Throwing is Jackson. And that is incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers, another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And even 30 yards on a play that began back at the 30. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Here's Jackson to throw again. Sneed's got it. And he's got another first down Let's as the go, tackle's going to be Let's made go. at the Patriots' 29-yard line. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Jackson on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Jackson throwing again. Robert's got it. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. This is Ingram on first and 10. And all the way down inside the five to the four. We got this. Back to back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. They'll come out in the pistol. Coming up to the line and they will need to run another play here before the two minute warning. They'll run here with Ingram. Able to push his way. And he will force his way into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Ravens cut into that lead. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is secured by the Patriots. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Second down, Michelle. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll run with Michelle. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Silver, silver. And down he goes. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. On third down, Michelle. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This to make it a three-score game late. And he missed it. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns, a little over a minute to go. Now the missed field goal, that was big. That keeps them within two scores, and they've got it first and 10. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 38. From the gun, Jackson. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. But it's going to be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Ready. 
They work again from the 38 on second and 10. And that QB's trash. Let's go. Now Jackson. Going to throw again. He dumps it down to Ingram. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play. And that is going to set up a third and one. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. Jackson caught by Snead over the middle. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, Stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Baltimore, good night, everybody.